All right, MRC, welcome back. And I'm really excited to kind of get rolling with you again today. And we got so much to dig into here over the next couple of days. Um, yesterday, we really started to get into our study of Psalm 84. And if you remember, we really made it far, right? We only made it through one verse, but I think it was an important one. And it was a great place to kind of hang out and linger for a time. And I hope that you were able to continue to look at the scriptures and, and really reflect on them throughout your day yesterday. We hung out in Psalm 84, verse 5. And how blessed all those in whom you live, whose lives become roads you travel. What we were talking about yesterday and really over the first couple of days is this building concept of the, the, the life-giving power of the Spirit that could be in us. We've been looking at this idea of all that could be if we could surrender to the will of God. There's amazing gifts for all of us there in our lives if we accept God's will for our life. But sadly, few ever do. Few get to that place where they believe, accept, and surrender to God and allow all that could be to take shape in their life. And today I want to pick right back up with you in Psalm 84 and continue this study. And I think what happens as we start walking deeper into this psalm is we get to understand why it would be so important for us to have this life-giving spirit in us. We're going to see why guys like Paul will remind us over and over again and write letters back to their churches reminding their people, hey, you have Christ in you. We're reminding them of that over and over and over again. And they do that because life is hard. I know that doesn't come as a surprise to any of us who have spent any length of time on this planet, but life is hard and adversity will hit your life. And the reason we see this coming up in Scripture in a lot and people reminding us constantly in Scripture that we need to come back to this idea of God living in us and how important it is, is because when God lives in you, you can have peace. You can find a centeredness that you won't find any other way. You will have focus and even energy that you wouldn't find any other way. You get that because the source of your life and your power and everything is this internal strength found from God. You, you can make it through anything life throws at you because God is central to all of it. It's because God's living in you and that can never be taken from you. So let's keep going here and let's add verses six and seven to this study we're in on Psalm 84. And how blessed all those in whom you live, whose lives become road you roads you travel. Here we go with verses six and seven. They, they wind through lonesome valleys, come upon brooks, discover cool springs and pools brimming with rain. God traveled, these roads curve up the mountain, and at the last turn, Zion, God, in full view. So what do we see here? I think it's important for us to really slow it down and look at this. Well, what we're seeing is a life that's described um, as blessed because it's God lived, right? But if you also notice that this life is also described as one that's winding through lonesome valleys, that comes upon brooks and springs and pools of rain, it's God traveled and the road is windy, it curves up mountains and at the end it leads to Zion, to, to God. And I think this is so powerful and I really wanted you to see what, what, what the writer's saying here. And it's really, it's really just an artsy way of saying life is really hard and has lots of challenges. Do you see it there? See, it's a life of high moments, like the things that you like posting on social media. And it's also got its low moments, probably the things you're not sharing with people on social media, but we're all experiencing this stuff. It's a life of lonesome valleys, but it also has amazing moments too. It's a life that has its mountains to climb. And I don't know about you, but if you ever climbed a mountain, not all that easy to do. And when it comes to life, we all have these mountains in them, don't we? But I want you to notice that at the top of that mountain, after all the endless turns and winding roads of life, this God-traveled life ends up where? Looking at God. Zion right in front of it. See, the writer of this psalm is saying that the person with whom God lives is blessed because life is hard, but God is traveling it with them. And at the end of all of it is eternity to come. I think this is a really big deal, and I want you to understand this about our lives. When we accept, believe, and surrender to what could be, we are blessed beyond measure, not because of 
life won't keep happening. Like not because life's going to just get simpler and easier as we go, but because we get to walk through all of it with God. We are blessed with God living in us because we have the advantage of this life-giving power in us, which means that when the tough times come, and they will come, a God-traveled person won't fall apart. They, they won't lose their focus because everything centers on God. And I think the biggest reason a person is so blessed because, because God lives in them is because all of their motivators, all of their drive, it comes from God, who's inside them. See, all their motivations, all their drives, all that energy is internal. It's coming from an internal source, rather than where a lot of people go for their motivations and energy, which is external sources, right? A lot of people look to other people, look to other things, substances, events, um, different things to go to to find energy and motivation and drive, and all of that stuff can be taken away. And I want you to see this. God inside you can never be taken away from you. External sources of motivation and energy, they absolutely can be taken away. And it leads me to a very important question. And it was one I was excited to get into with you today. Where do you go for your motivation? What is it that drives you? Where do you get the motivation to, to walk through and engage life? See, for the person who has God living in them, they are blessed because they receive this life-giving power of the Spirit, and they're drawing their motivation from God in them. That's their power source. And frankly, it can never be taken away. And I think this is where so many people get in trouble in their lives, both spiritually and practically. They, they refuse to own their own development. They put it on someone or something else to, to get them through each and every day of their lives. And, and while those things can all help them for a little while, they're not sustainable and they can be taken from them. It ends up being very shaky ground. And I want to show you some of this today because I think this is even more enhanced in the world that we're living in right here in the middle of this pandemic. And we'll start with this one. Don't laugh. I like to run. I, I love to run. I actually really enjoy it. Now, I know when you look at me, you're not seeing the runner's body here. So don't, don't send me any emails. I know I don't look like a runner, but I enjoy running. I like the fresh air. I like getting out and exercising. I just like being outside and breathing. And I'm so thankful for that time that I have to kind of recharge my batteries and breathe in the air and spend time with God. And I'm just thankful for the health that I have to do that right now. But, but for me... Running is all about getting out and engaging life that way. Nature, fitness, <coughs> excuse me, it's all internal. Like it's just me in the road. I just like getting out there, trails, all that stuff. But I know a lot of runners, like runners, like the people that would call themselves runners, that wouldn't be me, you see that from my look, um, who talk to me and think I'm a little crazy because I, I'm not putting any races out in front of me to go run in. I know a lot of people think I'm nuts because I don't run in many races. I, I don't see myself running many marathons or, or I don't think I'm going to the Olympics someday when I grow up. And, and for a lot of people, they look at that and don't understand how I can enjoy running if I'm not running for the next 5K race, 10K race, half marathon, marathon or whatever. But for me, frankly, the races cost a lot of money and just stress me out anyway, but I run for me. I don't really run for races, and I know many runners right now that are really struggling during this pandemic and the coronavirus things because it's shut down all of their races. It's, it's taken away that external motivator, right? They, they would get excited to go run with people, but now with social distancing, they can't, and it's becoming a struggle to roll out of bed and continue to try to exercise and stay fit. Do you see it? If you're getting in shape for your health and your well-being, it's an internal thing, right? They can't be taken away from you. COVID-19 can't take that from you. But if you're just trying to get in shape for the next race, well, you can lose that as we're seeing right now. I see a lot of this type of thing around my daughter in youth soccer. She loves the game of soccer and really has a heart for it. And after coaching soccer myself as a volunteer and being around youth sports forever, there's one thing that's crystal clear to me. The motivation and passion for the sport 
has to be the child's. It just cannot be mommy and daddy's or this will not be a sustainable thing. And I know for me, like watching my daughter, like Sid loves it. And because she owns her own development, I can really see her going places with this game if she wants to. Because it's not mom and dad pushing her to do the things that, that, that we want her to do, right? It's not mom and dad dragging her to the fields and dragging her to trainings. Frankly, it's usually the other way around. It's her dragging us to all of the stuff she wants to do next. She has a heart for it without the parental push. So as a dad, I see that and know, wow, this is something I need to foster for her because it's her passion, not mine. So many children are playing soccer right now or sports in general because the parents are pushing them into it. They're dragging their kids to practices and trainings that they don't want to go to and forcing them to do things they don't really want to do. And those kids typically burn out and quit before high school. So I want you to see this. The motivation coming from within is sustainable and it can't be taken away. If it's ex external, it, it's probably not going to last and it can be taken away. See, I think we see this a lot in different practical ways, but you know what? We're seeing this often in our spiritual development, and today, in the middle of this pandemic, it really stands out to me. We all know men and women who talk about their need for small groups and community and discipleship classes. Now, I'm going to stop right here, and I want you to hear me. I think all those things that I just listed are very good things. I think all of those things can enhance and, and strengthen your relationship with God. I think they're all good, right? But for so many men and women out there, they are not owning their spiritual development. They're relying on a small group or a discipleship built by the church to be their time with God for them. And while those things are good and can help, they are not and should not be your personal walk with God. So what happens when this stuff is taken away? You know, this is sad when it comes to physical fitness, when the 5K race is taken away and we pout some and gain a little weight. And it's, it's sad when it comes to a young person burning out on, 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 a, on a youth fun sports game like soccer. But this is a tragedy when it comes to a person's walk with God. I don't think there's been anything more frustrating for me in ministry than trying to encourage people to engage and grow in their walk with the Lord while watching their spiritual growth being stunted because they're relying on external things to motivate them to spend time with their heavenly father. And while they do that, they're typically labeling Ken and I as the guys who don't like small groups and don't like discipleships all the while by not engaging their heavenly father they're missing out on all that could be. And they're not grasping that it was their heavenly father who loved them enough to send his son to this earth to sacrifice his life in a horrific way so that we could all experience eternal life and, and also now walk in a free, personal, and intimate relationship with God. Can I tell you something? If you are not spending personal and meaningful time with God, you are not fully surrendered to him. You are not experiencing all that life could be. If you are relying on external motivators uh, to, to do things in life, to grow, if you're relying on external things like discipleships, men's groups, women's group, even regular Sunday morning in-person services to be your time with God, this is a challenge. If this is your relationship with God, you are now living in a time when that stuff has been taken away from you. You can tangibly see the result of what can happen. This stuff doesn't necessarily stay with you all the time. But when you love God with all your heart and are experiencing a life that is God-traveled, you don't seek external motivation because you realize that God is all you need. Everything else, Sunday morning services, small groups, fun church activities, discipleship classes, all of it, that's all just a bonus because you have accepted what could be. And what could be is God living in you. So we'll see you tomorrow as we talk about 
this number one priority and desire that builds as you live a life fully surrendered to God. See you tomorrow.